Welcome. The sun late yesterday and early this morning produced an X flare. It was an X1 flare. X is the largest category of flares that the sun can produce. So this is a special occasion. This is the 18th such X flare so far this cycle, and it was the 15th brightest of those X flares. So let's take a detailed look at that X flare. This is the light curve of the X flare. This is the light curve in X-rays. That's how the categories of flares are determined by their X-ray intensity. You can see the categories on the right hand side here. The smallest type of flare is an A flare. The next largest is a B flare. Now those are hardly even discussed except for its solar minimum. The next highest category are C flares, which is really the first most interesting classification of flares. Above that are M flares and X flares. Now, each one of those categories is a factor of 10 brighter than the previous category. So an X flare, by definition, is 10,000 times brighter than an A flare. We have had some X10 flares or above, which I would call Y flares, but for some reason, Noah hasn't created a Y category or a Z category for that matter. So let's take a look at this X flare. It occurred about 2314 UT on July the 2nd and lasted well into July the 3rd, into about 300 hours. So we'll go through each one of these characteristics of the flare as we progress to higher temperatures. There were some space weather effects from this flare. It produced an R3 radio blackout event. An R3 event is a wide area of a high frequency communications blacked out. You can see here this was mainly over the Pacific Ocean. A loss of radio contact for about an hour on the sunlit side of the Earth. And if you look on the right hand side, you can see that frequencies below 5 megahertz were pretty much blanked out. It can also affect navigation systems. Low frequency navigation systems degraded for the length of the time of the flare, which was about an hour. So where was this flare from? It was from region AR3354 up here in the northwest part of the sun, marked with that little red square. And here is the optical picture of that flare showing the sunspots. And there's a large number of sunspots. In fact, this is two regions. The big region here to the south is 3354. The one to the north, that uh, single spot up there, is 3351. So the question is, uh, where did this flare occur in this huge region that we have here? Well, to answer that question, we're going to have to go to the Solar Dynamics Observatory AIA instrument and look at the UV continuum. That's a channel that's not often used. It's at 1700 angstroms. And the reason why we use it is that it shows the sunspots, but it also shows the location of the flares. The flares show up as a sudden brightening in, in this particular channel. Note that when you look at this, that the flare starts in the middle of the region and spreads to the strong trailing part of the region. So let's peel back the layers of the sun like an onion. We'll start with the cooler temperatures, and we're going to do that by looking at the SDO AIA helium-2304 line, which is about 50,000 degrees. This is the three-hour movie, and the interesting thing here is there's no sign of any ejecta. So this is a contained flare. Even though it's a huge flare, it's a contained flare. It doesn't break out of the solar magnetic fields uh, that are surrounding it. That's probably because the sunspots are so strong. So there's likely no coronal mass ejection and probably therefore no uh, geomagnetic storm as a result, which is unusual for this class of flare. test whether the flare produced a CME by using the SOHO LASCO coronagraph data in conjunction with the SDO AIA 94 angstrom channel. <music> this 
This confirms there was no CME. So it will not cause a geomagnetic storm here at Earth, even though this is on the western side of the sun, which is best connected to the Earth for these sorts of events. Now, there was no proton event either, which again is unusual, which again means that no particles escape from this event. And you can take a look at the proton plot here from NOAA on the right, and it's as flat as a pancake throughout this time period. For our next movie, we're going to move up into the quiet corona. This is uh, the SDO AIA 171 Angstrom channel. This is about 550,000 degrees Kelvin, so about a factor of 10 hotter than the previous uh, movie I showed you. Note how the post flare loops here grow and drain as they cool. Well, let's take a look at the flare at its hottest. The hottest channel we have available is in the Solar Dynamics Observatory AIA 131 Angstrom channel. That's about 10 million degrees Kelvin. So this is a very hot channel. So this is this is the real flare uh, core. <laughs> So how to summarize all of this? This X1 flare was the 18th X flare so far this solar cycle. It compares to 12 at the same stage of solar cycle 24. So once again, solar cycle 25 is outperforming solar cycle 24 by quite a large margin. It was the 15th largest solar flare since solar cycle 25 began in January of 2020. It was unusual for such a large event not to produce a coronal mass ejection. And we've confirmed that that didn't happen. So thank you for watching. And until next time, stay safe and goodbye.